Everyone knows the fate of a retired commercial aircraft. After logging tens of thousands of flight hours, it is usually sent to an aviation graveyard in the desert left under the scorching sun. There, in silence, its engines and components are stripped away and its massive frame is eventually broken down into scrap. But not this aircraft with the 1960s frame. The Korean Air Boeing 747 is proving capabilities no other aircraft can match, not even Airbus aircraft. But how exactly is this 747 continuing to redefine the standards of aviation? More importantly, what bold role is it taking on? Let's find out. The giant Boeing 747-8, once proudly bearing the registration HL-7631 with Korean Air, has refused to end its era in the desert. Instead, in late September this year, it completed a mysterious overnight journey, flying from Dayton, Ohio, before quietly landing at Hamburg Airport in Germany. This was no ordinary flight. It carried a hidden purpose, not to mark an end, but to begin an entirely new mission. So, why is it here? The 747-8 has arrived in Hamburg to undergo a major conversion, where it will be re-registered as N-747EF and reborn as a strategic machine. The E-4C, also known as the Survivable Airborne Operations Center, SAOC. Under its contract with the U.S. Air Force, Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC, will modernize and deliver this advanced fleet of E-4Cs, replacing the aging E-4B Nightwatch aircraft currently in service. But here's what makes many curious. Why would an outdated aircraft be chosen for such a critical role? When the U.S. Air Force began searching for a successor to the aging E-4B, several airframes could, in theory, have been considered. Candidates included Airbus A380, Boeing's own 777, or even smaller, newer wide bodies like the 787. Yet the final choice was the Boeing 747-8, and the reasons may surprise you. The answer lies not in cutting-edge features, but in its inherent physical capabilities. While newer rivals focus on fuel efficiency, this jumbo jet remains an irreplaceable platform. Let's make this clear. First, the jumbo jet's sheer size provides unmatched internal volume. Unlike the 777 or 787, the jumbo jet can house extensive racks of communications gear, hardened command modules, specialized antennas, and rest areas for senior leaders and crew. The A380 is technically larger, but its double-deck configuration makes structural modifications far more complex and expensive, especially when integrating military hardware and EMP shielding. Second, the jumbo jet is capable of generating enormous electrical power. This is critical for supporting advanced satellite communications, long-range radar, secure networking, and protection systems designed to survive nuclear electromagnetic pulses. Smaller widebodies simply cannot deliver this level of surplus power without extensive redesign. Third, the aircraft's long-range and in-flight refueling capability ensure it can stay airborne indefinitely. In a crisis, the platform must serve as a mobile pentagon, able to orbit safely for days if necessary. While the 777 is efficient, it lacks the same endurance and redundancy baked into the 747. These attributes grant it the flexibility and strategic advantage that smaller, newer aircraft simply cannot provide, even if its specifications are no longer the most advanced. The U.S. Air Force recognized this unmatched potential. In a high-security defense deal, it acquired not just one but five jumbo jets from Korean Air, leaving the airline with only five of the type remaining in its fleet. The $674 million agreement was part of a broader modernization plan, with the official transfer of the aircraft completed on September 20, 25. Once the transformation is finished, this highly specialized aircraft will become the ultimate airborne command center, trusted by the President of the United States and top national security leaders to ensure uninterrupted command, control, and communication during the gravest national emergencies. Instead of being reduced to scrap, the Boeing 747-8 has been reborn as a flying fortress. It stands not only as a testament to durability, but also as proof that for top-secret strategic roles, the right physical platform outweighs age. More importantly, it affirms its singular value, one no other aircraft can match, even if its technical specifications are no longer cutting edge. So now how can the jumbo jet turn into an SAOC? By, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. They call it the doomsday plane. Back to the 1970s, the height of the Cold War, when both the United States and the Soviet Union possessed enormous nuclear arsenals. In that tense era, the fear of a sudden nuclear strike loomed large. Washington realized that a preemptive attack could wipe out ground-based command centers, 
paralyzing the nation's ability to control its nuclear forces. This gave birth to the need for an airborne command post, a flying fortress that could never be taken out. On June 19, 73, the first E-4A took flight, built on the Boeing 747-200B airframe. These aircraft were conceived as America's insurance policy. Even if Washington were reduced to ashes, the chain of command would survive. Later, the upgraded E-4B entered service, hardened against electromagnetic pulses, EMP, a devastating byproduct of nuclear detonations capable of disabling unprotected electronics. This EMP protection is what truly made the E-4B a fortress in the sky. The nickname Nightwatch was no accident. It symbolized the aircraft's role as silent guardians, always ready, circling above to preserve the president's and senior military leader's ability to command even in the darkest night of a nuclear Armageddon. And this was not just theoretical. On September 11, 2001, as America reeled from terrorist attacks, at least one E-4B was scrambled from Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska. Eyewitnesses in Washington, D.C. even reported seeing a mysterious plane with a satellite dome circling overhead during those chaotic hours. The episode underscored once again the strategic significance of these Nightwatch aircraft. They are the ultimate failsafe ensuring continuity of command and control when the unthinkable happens. But there's a problem. The fleet is aging badly. The first of these four E-4B took flight all the way back on June 19, 73. Even though they were later hardened against nuclear electromagnetic pulses, these aircraft have served decades longer than they were ever meant to. Their retirement was supposed to happen in the mid to late 2000s. It didn't, because no replacement existed. Now, a successor has finally emerged. The Survivable Airborne Operations Center, or SAOC. The U.S. Air Force has awarded Sierra Nevada Corporation the contract to develop and build it, working alongside Rolls-Royce. The platform of choice, as we know, is the Boeing 747-8. Five of them have already been purchased from Korean Air. These airframes will be stripped down, rebuilt, and transformed into some of the most advanced and resilient aircraft ever made, expected to enter service in the 20s, with the full program complete by July 20, 36. That purchase hints at a future fleet of five aircraft, though one may end up as a donor for spare parts. And it's a clever decision. The 747-8 shares DNA with the new VC-25B Air Force One, creating a rare level of commonality at the very top of American aviation. Still, some have suggested the fleet might need to grow to as many as eight or even ten aircraft if the SAOC takes on the legendary Looking Glass mission. For decades, that mission has belonged to the Navy's 16 E-6B Mercury jets, themselves built on the old Boeing 707. These planes have handled take charge and move out, relaying orders to nuclear submarines and land-based ICBMs, and if required, even launching them remotely. But their replacements, based on the C-130J, won't have that same ability. Which means the Air Force's SAOC could inherit some of the most sensitive and powerful responsibilities in the American arsenal. To prepare for that role, the 747-8s will be fitted with hardened systems, advanced secure communications and reinforced protection against EMP. And crucially, they'll retain in-flight refueling capability, allowing them to stay airborne for as long as the mission demands, something the VC-25B cannot do. When the program is complete, the aircraft will stand as a central pillar of the National Command Authority. It will be the airborne command post from which the President of the United States could launch a nuclear strike from anywhere on Earth. The mission is so critical that, even today, an E-4B shadows the President on every overseas trip. And the Secretary of Defense? He flies on it regularly, too, alongside his staff and members of the press. The old night watches were never supposed to last this long. But soon, they'll pass the torch. And when they do, the doomsday plane, reborn on the back of the Boeing jumbo jet, will carry America's most powerful command mission into the future. While the decision to use the Boeing 747-8 as the backbone for the survivable Airborne Operations Center appears to be a logical and technically advantageous choice, the program still faces enormous risks and challenges. The history of high-priority U.S. defense projects shows that even the best-laid plans are easily susceptible to delays, cost overruns, and complex integration issues. The primary and most visible concern is the potential for massive budget overruns. Transforming a commercial jet into a hardened airborne command post is a complicated and expensive engineering endeavor requiring customization of nearly every component. A practical example is the Air Force One VC-25B replacement program, which also uses a similar 747-8 platform 
and has already faced major cost escalations, climbing billions of dollars above initial estimates. The SAOC program shares this risk, as integrating nuclear electromagnetic pulse protection, highly secure satellite communication suites, and advanced command systems demands far more extensive and costly modifications than a civilian aircraft. Furthermore, the U.S. Air Force has set clear timelines. Initial deliveries are expected in the 2030s, with the fleet fully operational by 2036. Delays would force the U.S. to continue relying on the current E-4B fleet. These aircraft, which first flew in the 1970s, would have to fly well past the designated 50-year mark, increasing the risk of mission disruption due to mechanical wear. Additionally, the technical challenges for SNC, such as ensuring massive electrical loads for multi-channel communication systems, VLF, SHF, UHF, and the EMP hardening, represent engineering solutions unprecedented in the commercial aerospace sector. External factors, such as global supply chain disruptions and shortages of specialized technical labor, could easily further strain the conversion schedule. Therefore, while the Boeing 747-8 provides a unique and superior physical foundation, the journey to turn it into a doomsday plane will be a formidable test, challenging the technical limits, financial discipline, and political patience of the Pentagon. In many ways, the choice of the Boeing 747-8 for the next generation doomsday plane is more than a practical decision. It is symbolic. This airframe, once the icon of commercial air travel, carried millions of passengers across the globe in an age when aviation itself defined globalization. Now, in its second life, it will serve not as a carrier of tourists or business travelers, but as the ultimate guardian of national survival. The transformation of the 747 into the survivable airborne operations center highlights a paradox of aviation. Newer is not always better. While airlines have largely retired the jumbo jet in favor of more efficient twins, its size, power, and endurance make it uniquely suited for missions where compromise is unacceptable. No A380, no 777, and no smaller aircraft could so seamlessly carry the weight, both physical and symbolic, of America's nuclear command and control. Ultimately, this jumbo jet reminds us that an aircraft can transcend its commercial origins to become something greater, a platform of resilience, authority, and deterrence. For the United States, the jumbo jet's rebirth as the SAOC ensures that even in the darkest scenarios, continuity of command will not falter. And for the world, it is proof that the queen of the skies still holds a throne, not in the passenger market, but at the very heart of global security.